what we're doing is beating and bending and breaking FDM into something that you can develop, prototype, iterate, and produce on. This is such a foregone conclusion that I'm not even going to sit here and debate it with you. This is Sanjay Mortimer, and if you've ever used a 3D printer, you've either used his work or you've used work ripped off his work. He is at least in part why almost all nozzles are M6 threaded, why 0.4 millimeters is the standard, and why pretty much every printer has a heat sink that looks like a honey dipper. I was working for a, a filament manufacturer in the UK, mm. but I used to kind of sail boats for a living on the side. Sanjay, I've never met the guy before, <laughs> and he just jumps onto the boat and goes, oh, did you know that we can do colour mixing? And I was like, hi, I'm Claire. <laughs> so he just gets out his phone and starts showing me it's like some sort of magical mystery <laughs> tour of filaments. That was my introduction to the, the crazy mayhem of, of Sanjay Mortimer. <laughs> I met Sanjay in the summer of 2021, and that first video call went on for like four straight hours. We talked about high temperature super polymers, filament made from fishing nets, and this cutting edge ceramic hot end he was in the middle of prototyping. That chat convinced me to try more filaments for myself, and convinced him to send some leftovers from E3D's testing lab. Both ended up inspiring my most popular video, Every Single Filament. The second time we talked was that August, when I interviewed Sanjay on my stream. I used to have a stream. That dragged on over an hour too long, and it would have gone even longer if viewers hadn't noticed the smoke wafting past his window. I'd like to inform everyone that Sanjay's house is on fire. We're trying to complete the interview before he's consumed by the flames. He was supposed to be hosting a barbecue. I've just been nerding out with Zach about plastic. His hungry friends had lost their patience and lit the grill themselves. I'm Good definitely show. gonna go, or I'm gonna get someone into trouble. The third time we talked never happened. Sanjay was one of my closest friends and I had a crazy idea what I can do in 3D printing. He was the guy I bounced the idea just a couple of weeks before his passing. We've, we've partied and we've talked all night and it was so amazing. I will never forget him. In November 2021, Sanjay's company E3D had finally launched that ceramic hot end, now called the Revo. It was their highest profile launch in half a decade, and all that crunch time and the media appearances had just left him totally burned out. He dipped out for an early bedtime, and he never woke up. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, I usually make goofy videos with more puns than payload, but Sanjay's death really shook me. We were both 32 years old, we were both known for 3D printing, and his defining traits, those were what I tapped in myself to make the channel I ended up calling Void Star Lab. If the pandemic had never forced me out of freelancing, if Brooke didn't encourage me to make videos, if an algorithm never pushed you to watch them, I, well, no one but my friends and family would even know I existed at all. Late last November, just over two years after Sanjay passed, Brooke and I packed our bags, boarded a plane, and half slept through a nine hour flight to London Heathrow. I hadn't left the country in almost a decade, but I made an exception for the inaugural Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest, AKA Smurf. This wasn't just a tribute to someone who played a pivotal role in the industry. Like Sanjay kind of played an important part in my channel's history. Plus Smurf was the first hobbyist 3D printing convention ever done in the UK. This video was supposed to be just like a silly travel vlog complete with a last minute black tie dinner, run-ins with YouTubers, and of course, tea time. There was a functional jetpack, a robot arm signing autographs, and some truly ludicrous 3D printers from fast as a rocket to fueled by chocolate. We watched Joseph Prusha himself donate over a thousand bucks to charity to make Florida man 3D musketeers shave his head on camera. 3D Musketeer's head, not Prusha's head, though I would have dropped 10 grand to see that. But as more and more people told more and more stories about Sanjay himself, I realized these silly projects were conveying a serious message. There are some people who continue to inspire the world long after they're gone, and there are others that just cease to exist. The difference was on every table. If you share what you love and you love when others share, you can transform lives without even realizing it and be sorely missed by folks you barely met. This is that story. Out of respect for Sanjay, this video is not sponsored. I am also donating every quid of ad revenue to the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation, a nonprofit that helps neurodivergent people find their place in engineering. I'd like to thank our patrons for funding this trip and letting me give his memory the dignity it deserves. 
He was a bit naughty and he had his secrets. A collection of hissing cockroaches I was blissfully unaware of. Slugs he microwaved and ants he stored in the freezer. Okay, maybe Sanjay doesn't deserve that much dignity. That's his mom, by the way. She gave a speech about her son's early life that was as touching as it was forthcoming. I also remember a planned family visit when I rang him the night before. He told me he'd be on a plane to the US the next day. Luckily, Josh and Dave stepped up, who I'd never met before, and hosted us the whole holiday. She's referring to David Lamb and Josh Rowley, who, along with Sanjay, co-founded E3D, possibly the best-known manufacturer of 3D printer parts. But back then, it was an education startup, and they were trying to sell teachers training courses on how to get 3D printers into the classroom. Education, 3D, E3D... I say trying because they were screwed from the start. As Sanjay himself told a 3D printing blog, printers of the time were dying diabolically bad. Heat would creep up the extruder and prematurely soften the filament till it eventually buckled, clogged, and triggered a spectacular meltdown. E3D's business plan relied on affordable open source printers, but their hot ends wouldn't always survive the lesson. They would now make affordable printers reliable enough to put in a classroom by redesigning the business end from scratch. So the heat sink on this would be the first the first heat sink that we made, so I... Oh, this is, a, this is an E3D V1. This is, well, it's, yeah, it yeah. is, yeah, exactly. Their first version was a mess. The second proved the concept, and the third worked but underperformed. The whole time, Sanji was hitting up 3D printing forums and posting their progress anyways. The experiments finally paid off in the fourth iteration. Barely one year after founding the company, Sanjay, Dave, and Josh announced the E3D V4. It's hard to understate the extent to which the V4 revolutionized hobbyist printing. Your standard mid-range kit printer went from an angry gremlin that needed constant babysitting to a trustworthy tool that you could leave chugging for days. Their products were so influential, every engineering decision they made instantly became an industry standard. In my toolbox at home, well, I had a welding tip and we had an M6 tap, so I was just like, well, we'll just use this. This will be fine. It's got a hole down the middle, right? That is why all of the V6 and 3D printing nozzles are <laughs> in M6 thread pattern. Sanjay's personal toolbox is also why the default nozzle is 0.4 millimeters. The cheapest drill bits that I could get that were small were 1 64th inch drill <laughs> bits, which I believe is 0 0.396. So I was like, well, these will make a hole that's small enough. It's, it's your fault everyone's using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You did this? They kept refining, tuning, and optimizing. And when they released the E3D V6, it immediately became the hot end. If you've ever used a Lulzbot Ultimaker or Prusa Marks 1 through 3, you've used a modified E3D V6. If you built a kit from an OG printer bot to a first gen Voron, you've probably used a stock V6. If you had a different printer, it almost certainly had a bootleg V6. In a hobby where parts get upgrades every month, this hot end was relevant for almost a decade. The V6 is only now getting muscled out by ceramic heater cores like E3D's own Revo. And I'll remind you, that's another one of Sanjay's projects. When he got an idea, everyone knew about it, and he never, ever second-guessed his ideas. He didn't get hung up worrying whether or not he could build it, what others thought of it, whether it could go to market. He would just see a problem, get an idea, build it as fast as possible, and show it to anyone who stood still long enough. It's the essence of 3D printing. In its, in its initial rep rap stage, it was all about, you know, what have you got around you. Most of his experiments turned out to be dead ends, and they're now collecting dust in E3D's archive. Others were just too impractical to bring to market. But a lot of Sanjay's work did end up getting sold, like a 4-in-1 hot end, a liquid-cooled extruder, and of course the E3D tool changer, the company's only first-party printer. Of course he helped design this. Who else would? This is E3D's latest product, the Revo Roto Extruder. The perforated metal isn't just kind of the next-gen heat sink. It also serves as a heat brake, gearbox, and more. This is so intricate it could only be made by 3D printing aluminum, which in 2024 is cutting-edge stuff. Sanji's fingerprints are everywhere on this product, and I suspect it's going to be one of his final commercial projects. I took a lot of this footage in E3D's HQ in Oxfordshire. They invited a couple dozen so-called influencers to tour their facility and witness the making of the metaphorical sausage. This place is just bursting with character, like this extruder on strings that turned the whole machine shop into a giant delta print.
Mariner. The hot end testing jigs are named after hot celebrities. There's a Benchy tucked in every corner and a colossal Core XY printer big enough to fit a full scale model of yours truly dominates the testing room. They claim it's for checking nozzle endurance, but I think we all just want to build a really big printer. Speaking of, the Voron team stayed behind to put the finishing touches on a 600 cubic millimeter monster that they would auction off for charity on day one. This beast was too big to fit in the freight elevator and it took the whole team to lug it up Oxford University's marble staircase. It was Friday night and the Smurf exhibitors were setting up their booths. As a whole festival scrambled to uncreate prints and debug demos, I was struck by how many exhibitors were just regular hobbyists. For every company that was shilling a product, there were two random geeks filling their tables with side projects. I can imagine Sanjay drooling over most of them, like this insane subcompact printer with an upside down glass bed heated by transparent ITO traces. I, I think the hobbyists deserve a lot of credit here. Like this was the UK's first printer fest, so most of those exhibitors had never worked a show floor. Not everything survived the trip, like assuming it worked in the first place, but that didn't stop enthusiastic makers from talking the ears off everyone in range. Folks proudly showed off controllers that didn't control, printers that wouldn't print, buzz wire games that wouldn't buzz. What made Smurf such a touching tribute wasn't the signs, it wasn't the speeches, it was just kind of watching Sanjay's example play out. Sanjay shared tons of failed projects. They couldn't patent their flagship product because he documented the first three versions. I jam printers, I smash components, I spend half an episode on a dead end distraction and throw it in the trash, and then I make cringe ass puns about it to half a million subscribers. In a way, we were kind of sending the same message. From the moment the doors opened, I could barely walk 10 steps without a viewer running up and telling me how I finally got them to finish and share a project. No matter how perfect a project looks, it was once a dumpster fire. And every apparent genius just hid their stupid, stupid evidence. Where Sanjay and I differ, and a major reason I think folks loved having him around, is he would get obsessed with other people's obsessions. He was incredibly supportive of crazy ideas. One early conversation I had with him, I still think this is a cool prospect, right? <laughs> Hammer beads, kids wow. use and you, you iron them together. You could build like a 3D structure with these things. Three years, four years after that, he sent a telegram message to me just going, oh my God, Claire, look, some project on Reddit where someone has created exactly <laughs> this. They've done it. He would listen to anyone talk about anything and he wouldn't just humor them. He'd dive into that rabbit hole right after them and he would bring a shovel. But also, you know, he'd talk to a lot of people that were experts in, I don't know, CNC machining, turning, stamping, injection molding, and you wouldn't sort of see it happen from one day to the next, but you'd realize that you'd had all these conversations over the course of months and these ideas that seemed wacky originally, it's like, oh, this is really simple to do. Sharing passions in public isn't just about self-promotion. You also have to get so psyched about other people's stuff, they get fired up just telling you. This is something I've always personally struggled to do. I just always feel so far behind on my own projects, I don't have time for anyone else's. My ADHD feeds me an endless supply of excuses. Sanjay was upfront about his neurodivergence, but I suspect it had the opposite effect. Uh, at E3D, and there's this phone call, and it's this engineer at NASA, and he's like, I need to speak to, to Sanjay about this, this project that we're working on. I was like, <laughs> Sanjay, NASA's on the phone. And he's like, is it the good NASA? or the bad NASA. I only want to speak to the good one. Sure, he would bail on meetings to tinker with prototypes, but he would also bail on his prototypes to help a struggling engineer get back on track. He was wearing all the hats, all the time, probably all of them at the same time as well. Chaotic and amazing right from the start. And I think you'll probably, I know you're going to ask a few other people, yeah what it was like working with Sanjay, you'll hear the same from most of them. <laughs> it was glorious. If you can call on someone like this, you're never truly stuck. The more Sanjay helped others, the bolder and more confident they could become, because failure just isn't as scary when you got someone watching your back. It's absolutely glorious to see these things coming to fruition, um, which they were not started by him, but they were the passion 
was ignited by those conversations. I feel like kind of a bastard admitting this, but I am really feeling Sanjay's absence as I finish the series he inspired. I've been testing every single film, and, and I've already covered pretty much everything a hobbyist can buy. I really wish I had someone to call at 2 o'clock in the morning and ask, why does the conductive composite melt at 140 Celsius? Could wrapping fiberglass nylon with regular nylon really make it better? How do I demonstrate the radiation blocking filament without eating enough gamma rays to end the Cold War. One of Sanjay's less salubrious incidents was when he convinced me to buy him bottle bomb making equipment at a local hardware store. This is 11 years old. Maybe it's a good thing I have to figure that last one out for myself. Needless to say, the bomb blew up in his eye. Sanjay left a legacy because he shared his passions with others and others' passions himself, whether or not anyone asked for it. And I'm glad he did. If he had kept his projects private and just nodded along in conversations, like the world would be a worse place. You can't expect your work to speak for itself. You have the responsibility of enthusiastically shoving it down everyone's throats. More importantly, you can't stop there. You need to stoke others' enthusiasm just as much, and that requires you to put real time thought and care into whatever they can't stop talking about. I think a lot of people will take this advice like someone with ADHD getting told, just gotta get organized, man. Your life circumstances will make this easier or harder. But I just want you to consider, this isn't about you. People didn't just care about Sanchez's ideas because he was charismatic. And as far as I can tell, they didn't just pretend to care to shut him up. They wanted him to succeed because they wanted what he was working on, be it a clog-free hot end or inspiration for a video. Like, sharing passion is not about an airy-fairy abstract being part of something greater. This is about helping real people accomplish real things. If I indulge my ADHD and never vacuum my workshop, the only person whose feet are going to get impaled by plastic snippings is me. But if I gave in to social phobia, fear of criticism, imposter syndrome, I would deny everyone the chance to improve anything by taking what I'm offering. Most people don't care, but some people are clearly interested because you're still watching. It's not my role to decide whether I have anything to offer. I think if we could learn anything from Sanjay, you gotta give people the chance to turn you down because that's the price of letting others take you up. Sanjay wasn't omniscient, like he didn't always have something to add. He was just really good at getting people to ramble, making them feel comfortable instead of judged. Those around you can suddenly entertain ideas they used to subconsciously bury just in case they accidentally blurted them out. They need someone to blurt at, be their blurt sink. What I'm saying is, if you can't or won't share enthusiasm, it's time to change. Your time is gonna run out, but the things you set in motion will stay in motion and set others in motion in turn. That film video Sanjay inspired, two and a half million people saw it. And if only one in a thousand took it seriously, that's still two and a half Smurfs worth of makers who got out of their comfort zones. Maybe one of them will go on to inspire five million people. Maybe one of them will go on to finish a really cool project. It all starts when you expose your passions to the world and expose yourself to theirs. Sanjay was a complex guy with a complex story and it gave me complex feelings. I just hope I did his friends, family, and himself justice crunching all that complexity into 20 ad-friendly minutes. This was my hardest video. My own personal demons put up a lot of resistance and I have a lot of work to do here myself. I really want to thank you for watching, because one day this is going to be my legacy, and you're the one who gives me this privilege. Everything that exists will eventually end, but, you know, there will always be a future. I hope I can see you there. This trip and this episode were fully supported by our patrons who share my love of hacking and wisecracking, and whose support lets me share it more. I always thank 3 Lab Scientist supporters, and today's are Brick Stuff Hobby Electronics, Ryan Guler, and Cooper Digital. Our top tier collaborators are the Benevolent Misanthrope, The Suits Ruined, Our Fun, Schleppy the Schwagster, Microwave, What the Chuck, SXP, Bitrot, ZomboDB, Turner Zay, and Roxanne. It is channel tradition to hide their names in an Easter egg, and what can I say? I'm a traditionalist. They're also immortalized in our print room right under my E3D tool changer, which I have renamed Sanjay Squirtimer. Finally, we've got our collaborators. Their names might be a little silly, but let's be honest, even when I try to be serious, um, I'm silly too. 
Thank you, Rinri, Blamo, Padkid, Pored, Curd, Pulled, Cod, Craft Computing, Nathan Johnson, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Kevin Sumner, Vigeli, Sunburnt Cat, Danny Devoid of Life, Boulder Creek Yard James, Steve's Dad, Zanforian, Partial Eclipse, It's a Shart, Pucker Up, Bown Eyes, Will You Be My Bown Eyed Girl, Bob Dobbington, Cody, Agent Maxwell, Stormby Design, Robert the Bob, Max Luck is going to build that lamp. Don't do it, man. It's not worth it. Snow Dragon, Maker of Things, Hodler of Assets, Slippy McToof, Amanishi, Aaron Steers, VK2KTJ, Fremen, not Friedman, Anil Ingus, Quality Doggo, Protagonist, Spire, Travis Hippa, Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, Camry and Ogl Cameron Ogletree, that's the one I get tongue tied on? Timor has an unhealthy obsession with 42mm sized objects. Lydia K, Bootsy Von Poopstein, Olive Robbins, Evan Kinney, Big Bird Tommy What Goes Bump of the Night, Adam Birch, subscribe to the next layer on YouTube, seriously. General Buck Turgidson, Sticks Like the River, Not the Bend, Juicy Legend, Drinker of Juicy Legendary Fruits. I wonder what happened to the, uh, the robot. Uh, Robot Christopher, Kevin DeGraff, Brad Cox, Ad Demigod, Haley Kerman, Nuclear 314, Circle Zero, Rhiannon 99, and Urch, Mike Kelly, Joel Demon, Shane Frederick, Micah, I Just Set My Wedding Date, Friedman, Trump Did Nothing Wrong, Matthew Arrington of the Curly Braces, Cliff Henning, Topher, Invictus 707, King Shaming Walrus, Asunda Wheeler of Iron, Heater of Shrink, Kermit the OG Frog, Burn Duck 3, Zapf, Call Sign Carrot, The Antifa, My Dog is a Bear, Cameron McPherson, VPS Data, Clayton Easley, Moonkin, even Bluetooth has a right to repair. Paul Gibbs, 6875. Burn it, the monk. The worst part about growing old is not your body breaking down, it's the accumulation of things you can't unsee. Oh, they must have watched the episode with time traveling gentlemen, Zach. Rusty Flute, Doom Crew Inc., Michael, Incognito, The Cuttle Fish, Talon Democratic Socialist, Pretty Righteous Dude Dash Zach, Bradley Carter, Zach Harvey, Granville Schmidt, Cacophony of Failure, When Cooking Pickles on Blue, Make Sure to Take Care and Not Mix Up the Neutral and Ground of the Sugar May Interact with Stuff, Karnamon, Not a Digimon, Viwatch, Jason, Thunder Chicken, Renaud Batai, But Seriously, Ladies, Gentlemen, and Cyborgs, I Love You All, Scroto Sagans, Martin Titonium, Dax Dastardly, Seek Seth Checks, Trans Rights, Varka, Noah B. Johnson, Dr. Mrs. The Mirrorman, Emily, Jiggle My Puffs, Urge, Powerful CCH, Quantumly Tangled, a very threatening GMT400. Visit OMA3DPrints.com for all your 3D print RPG product needs. Michael Roche, Jamie, Acorn, Novaran, Period Clots, John Loves Jen, Onyx Plague, Bill Schooler, Dennis Kempen, The Haunted Leaky Water Heater Upstairs, but our water heater is in the basement. Brooke, did we ever check the attic? DBD, Socks McGox, Colin J. Webb, Laughs Like Hee Hee Ha Ho, Hugh Ha Ha Hoo Hoo, Amir Rahum, Robert Bree, Steven Six Foot Six Figure, Six Pack Schulte, Bryn Six Foot Five Figure, Forlorn Wolf Schulte, Zach, Eddie, S. Kale, probably not three raccoons in a trench coat, Iron Rain, Elite Giant, Measure Once Cut Twice, Reglue Cut Again, Michael Creamer Jr., Good Suck, Nami Nap, and Run Zach, they're right behind you. Good thing I never look back. My gaze is turned to the future. Thanks for watching, and Sanjay Mortimer, R I P L A, and P E T G, and P E E K, and P E I.